Welcome everyone, welcome to a new episode, a new podcast on Think About the Kingdom. This is your pastor, Yeti. Today I'm going to talk about Prove It to Me. And we are then in John chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. A powerful man named Nicodemus came to meet Jesus. He was a politician and a member of the Sanhedrin, the ruling Jewish council. At that point in history, the Jewish people were under the control of the Roman government, but were allowed to have local representations with limited authority. Like many with earthly power, he found his career and his pursuit of truth in conflict. He came to Jesus at night when none of the authorities would be aware of the meeting. Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, but no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Knowing the truth is one thing, but acting on it can be inconvenient. The chief priests had grown to cherish their power, even though it was limited by the bondage of the Roman occupation. Like their ancestors who lived in slavery under Pharaoh, they found living in a lie easier than making the sacrifices necessary to attain true freedom. Even in our modern people culture, modern culture, people prefer to relegate Jesus to being simply a good man who taught important lessons. Such proclamations require no commitment and reveal us to be practical atheists living as there is no God. Jesus was fully aware of this deflection and made sure to drive his next point home. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. The truth of the gospel requires a fundamental change in our worldviews and a complete transformation in how we think and behave. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Jesus was making this same point to Nicodemus when he said, You must be born again. This is a tough message to bring to a grown adult. It implies that the person must start over, admitting that their previous years were wasted. Nicodemus was already a very religious person, and that certainly had to count for something. You are Israelite's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? Religion is our attempt to get closer to the Creator by doing or avoiding things in order to earn favor. The truth is that God valued relationship with us to such an extent that He gave His Son to die on a cross. 
What do you? What do you do when you are confronted with a truth or aspect of God that surprises you or fundamentally challenges your deep convictions? Nicodemus found himself in that position as Jesus continued. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. None of us has all the answers or is expected to convince the world of the truth of the gospel on our own. We may even go through a season of soul-searching ourselves. In those times, we must cling to what we know and go back to the basic truths of our convictions, letting them be the bedrock of our lives. Love is what changes hearts, and love is the message of the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only and one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This verse is often quoted or held up at popular sporting events, but it's even more impactful when you examine the context. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. John 3, 14-15 Nicodemus wouldn't understood that Jesus was referring to the story of the Israelites becoming rebellious in their journey to the Promised Land. They came across poisonous snakes, and many started to die. God instructed Moses to create a serpent out of metal and, and attach it to a pole so that it could be seen by all the people. If anyone had been bitten by a snake, they were instructed to lift their eyes up and gaze at the pole, and they would be healed. As Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, he was using that story to foreshadow how God would bring ultimate healing to his people. Jesus would be lifted up on a cross and would bring salvation to all those who look to him. Jesus was the answer to the questions Nicodemus was asking. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. We are not called to judge the world. We are called to show the same love that Jesus showed us. The world stands condemned already, but Jesus is God's loving answer to save us from our present condition. As far as we know, Nicodemus never went public with his faith until after Jesus had been killed. I wonder how his life might have been different if he had boldly followed the teacher. What is preventing you from bringing your faith into the light? Allow your heart to be reborn as you lift your eyes toward the cross and become the proof that Jesus is Lord. May the peace of God be with you. And may you think about what you just heard. Nicodemus saw that was in Jesus something totally different. And he could not bring it all together. And for him, in his humanity thinking of the example that Jesus gave you must be born again he could not bring that in the thinking how to become a reborn a newborn person in Christ Jesus because that's the spiritual Jesus never asked to go back in the womb of the mother 
And so for so many people, I think, in this world, if you don't get the, understand what it really means, that your life is completely in a transformation, then think about the question. What is preventing you from bringing your faith into the light? And for us who are called to spread the good news, we have to pray for those who struggle to make that decision. And also for Christians who are going to a difficult time, they struggle. Because in our human thinking, we want to see things that happened. And believing is and the things that you don't see but still hold on that God is the God of creation and the God that promised in his promises yes and amen so think about the question and think about your life in the exact of your time where you are and talk to God or talk to friends May the Holy Spirit be your guidance. Amen. God bless. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye-bye.